welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger original air dates November 10th, 1943, and the title is Human Contraband. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. California rose to fabulous heights of wealth and power. One of these was Arnold Gerson, whose wealth reached out to develop the vast resources of the far west. Unlike the thousands of gold seekers, adventurers, and parasites who sought to grab only what they could hold in their hands, Arnold Gerson was in the far west to stay. Gerson saw the growing influx of the disreputable element and knew that they could and would destroy what he and others like him had wrested from this land of promise. He decided to strike at the heart the infamous Barbary Coast. In an effort to stamp out the viciousness, Gerson sought for and found the Lone Ranger. This masked rider of mystery, though reluctant to leave the plains and mountains of the cattle country, answered the call and soon found himself fighting a new type of criminal in the Barbary Coast. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! While Dan Reed was at school, he shared a room with his friend Bob Gerson. Many a happy hour was spent telling of the masked man's adventures before he came to California. Ah, I can tell from his letters, Bob. He'd be mighty glad to get back to the cattle country of the mountains. I wonder how town of likes in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't wouldn't like a big city any better than the Lone Ranger. And neither would I. Ah, I'd give anything to be back in Texas. Instead of school? Yeah. The only reason I'm willing to stick here in school is because the Lone Ranger asked me to learn the stuff they teach here. And the sooner I learn it, the sooner I'll be able to go back with them. But, Dan, the Lone Ranger's helping my dad clean up the Barbary Coast. I didn't think it was safe for you to stay back there in San Francisco. <laughs> I guess it's no more exciting, though, than some things that happened when we were back on the plains. For instance? Well, the time the Lone Ranger owned a haunted ranch. The Lone Ranger owned a haunted ranch? Yeah. Let's see. Where's the best place to start the story, Bob? You better start it mighty soon, Dan. It's after 7.30 and our study hour begins at 8. Start anywhere, but tell about the haunted ranch. Well, the first the Lone Ranger and I knew about it was when we were in camp. Tonto should have joined us there at sundown. But it was about two hours after dark. Don't scare a tunnel's horse. Give us Sally. Me come. Oh, oh, Scott, look on a hole. Look on a hole. Oh, golly. I thought something had happened to you. Well, plenty happened. Anyone come here? Well, no, Tunnel. 
We come long way round to hide trail to camp. Think maybe long and find camp and put you in jail, too. In jail? Yeah. Dan will take care of your horse. Tell us about it. Well, me in town, two fella come and say me killer. A killer? Ah. Uh, think me killed three men at Collins Ranch. Say me stranger in town. Ask plenty question, but me not answer. So they jailed you on no more evidence than that? Not right. How did you get out? That plenty strange. Fella come to Winder, jail. Him, young fella. Him say, him work at Collins Ranch. Did they give you his name? Ah, name Jeff Mason. Jeff Mason, cowboy at the Collins Ranch. That's right. Him talking, soft voice. See him there to help. I know you ain't the killer, Richard. But I also know that Sheriff Ryder's got to find someone to blame for the murders of my boss's bread. And you're the unlucky critter that's elected to hang. Well, why hang me? Because you... Well, you don't have any friends. It's likely no one would complain about flimsy evidence. Well, why not hang real murder? Sheriff not want to find real murder? I'll tell you why they can't hang the real killer of the three men. Why? Because they can't hang a ghost. You really think the ghost would kill those three men? Ah, him plenty serious. He met me out of jail and say, ride long way and keep going. If law see Tonto again, law shoot on sight. We'll pack up and head for the Collins Ranch. Uh, me know where ranch is. Yes, so do I. We'll make it by sunup. I want to see the place where ghosts commit a murder. Sit yourself down, Sam. I'll have the taters done in a minute. Glad you had a nose I got any appetite for breakfast this morning. Why, Sam Collins, are you going to believe all this idle chatter about our ranch being ghosted? But what else could it be? Oh, now, start eating. Jeff told you last evening that while he was in town yesterday, a redskin had been charged with the shootings. Oh, that's wrong. Sheriff Tucker's wrong, too. He just wants to make an arrest. He knows blame well that no redskin could have shot the men without leaving tracks. And with our own guns at that. At any rate, you didn't do it. Whoever did it is sure bring on my ruination. I won't be able to keep a cow hand here at any price if this slaughter keeps up. Sam, I do declare you're as nervous as a hen with new hatched chicks. Come in. Morning, Miss Collins. Oh, hello, Jeff. Howdy, boss. Mason, what's the latest? It ain't good. What do you mean? The latest is that Pete Loomis shot himself last night. What? Yep. Boys found him near the north line a little while ago. How do they know he shot himself? Well, his own gun was fired and still in his hand. Wasn't tracks of anyone, man or horse, outside the line fence. Oh, I don't know what to do. I reckon you better try and hire some new hands. Most of the boys are planning to leave here. Say the spread is who dude. Jeff, go talk to them. Ask them if they won't stay just a little longer. Give us a chance to find the cause of I'll ask them. I don't know as they'll stay. Madge, what are we going to do? Sell out. What? what? There's Sam at the back window. He's mad. My gun. Get my... Take it easy, Collins. A killer. Madge, run for Jeff. Catch him and get him. Me come in now. An Indian? Get over the horses, Dan. There's a whole band of them. There's three of us, Collins. We aren't killers. That Indian? Jeff Mason said that... Tell her who is in jail. Now listen to me for just a minute, Collins, and you'll have a choice choice. You can ask us to leave or invite us to stay. We'll do either one. You know Mustang Mag? Mustang Mag? I should say I do. Well, so do we. She's one of our best friends. Hasn't, uh, hasn't she spoken of a man who wears a mask? Well, Sam, she has. Do you remember at the last meeting of the Cattlemen's Association? What? You don't mean... Well, here's a bullet, Sam. A silver one. A silver bullet? And he does have a nice way of speaking. But what are you here for? I never yet found a true case of murder by a ghost. Because I don't believe in ghosts. You are the Lone Ranger. You've got to be. The Indian, the mask. Close the door, Toto. See no one comes here until we finish talking. Uh-huh. Collins, you've got to trust me. I know I've got to. I've got no choice. All the way. Why do you say that? You've got to trust me so far that you'll give me your ranch. What? And depend on my word that you'll get it back. Well, I... 
Do what you think is best, Sam. Mustang Mags often talked about you. Well, whatever you say, Cullen. I'll do it. I've heard stories about the Lone Ranger. Plenty of stories. I'll do anything you say. Good. And we offer paper at once. And I'll have to borrow some of your clothes. I put the horses in one of the sheds and gave all three of them a rub down to put in the time while the Lone Ranger went over his plans with Sam Collins. I was just about finished when I looked up and saw a man in the doorway. Hey, who are you? I didn't know Collins had hired new hands or kids to work his cow hands. Well, I'm not working here yet. <laughs> hey, whose horses are those? One is mine. The others belong to my friends. Mm, gone good horse flesh. Gone, gone good horse flesh. Come with me. Where? To the house. Uh, my name's Mason, Jeff Mason. I'm top hand around here, and I want to make sure the boss knows about you being here. My friends are there with your boss right now. All right, then you can join them. Odd things have been happening around here. Come on. We got to investigate all strangers. Uh, you're Jeff Mason, huh? <laughs> What's odd about that? Nothing. Well, why do you look at me that way? Who are you? My name's Dan Reed. Uh, here we are. Boss, I found a kid working in the shed. Well, Bob, when this man Mason and I entered the room, there sat Mr. Collins and his wife. Another man was there, too. I knew who he was. It was the Lone Ranger. But he wasn't wearing a mask. No, he had disguised his face like I'd seen him do many times before, when he had a good reason for doing it. When we opened the door, Mr. Collins said... Come in, Mason. Now, this kid was in the shed with three new horses. Fine ones. Shut the door. I want you to hear the news. Well, what news? Shake hands with this man, Mr... Mr. Justice. Well, Justice? You're Jeff Mason, huh? Uh, That's the name. I didn't see you come here. I guess you saw my horse. Yes. And uh, this is your friend, huh? That's right. The kid said there was another man here. Oh, he's not in the room at the moment. Here, read this. Then you can go and tell the rest of the men about it. Well, what's this? It tells a story, Mason. Sam turned the ranch hey, over to... what? Well, this says that Mr. Justice has bought the ranch lock, stock, and barrel. That's what it says. But, boss, why'd you sell it to him? Did you forget that Jeremy Lachlan wanted to buy the place? No, I didn't forget that. I told Lachlan I wouldn't sell. Yeah, but that was a month ago. Now you've changed your mind. He'll be sore about this. Lachlan didn't offer a fair price. Why, no, boss. And since we had our bad luck around here, he's been offering less than ever before. He's going to be downright sore about this, Collins. That's too bad. But I'm a free man with a right to make any deal I want to make. Go and tell the boys that from now on they'll take orders from Mr. Justice. Well, I'll tell him. Down with the south line, but I'll tell him. Maybe now they will quit. Oh, uh... One thing more. Yeah? Tell the men that they'll be paid double as long as I'm the owner. But I don't think there'll be any more murders. All right. Well, that's that. Great work, Collins. Get up there. I, uh, I just had a thought, Sam. Yes, Madge? That old ranger owns the ranch now, or, or at least a man by the name of Justice owns it. If he should be killed before he turns it back to us, then... Then wouldn't we lose our property? I'm going to take a lot of precautions to make sure nothing like that happens. But but if it did... It would be a point for the law to settle. And I know Dan and Tonto would be on your side. Hey, where is Tonto? I thought he was here. He's uh, willing to follow Jeff Mason. Follow him? To see where he goes and whom he talks to. Oh. If possible, find out why Jeff wanted him to escape from that jail last night. Tano managed to find brush or an arroyo or something so he could stay close to Jeff Mason all the way to town. He was outside a window when Mason talked to Jeremy Lochran. So now it's sold, Lochran. All right, then. They said it'll be sold again. The ghosts can get the new one in. Lochran, you mean that? I do. He'll kill himself. Then maybe his heirs will sell at my price. I want that ranch. (laughs) 
the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Dan Reed was in school with Bob Gerson and telling his classmate about one of the Lone Ranger's adventures in Texas. Well, Bob, it was early evening when Tonto came back to meet the Lone Ranger and me in the shed where we kept the horses. Tonto, did you follow Jeff Mason all the way to town? Uh, and him talked to a fellow named Jeremy Laughlin. Yes? Laughlin say, you die tonight. Oh, he did, huh? Uh, him say ghosts make you shoot yourself. If that happens... Cowboys here will be mighty disappointed. They're counting on that extra pay I promised them. You talk to them? Yes, Toto. I had a meeting while Mason was in town. Oh. They're good men, all of them. I can't blame them for wanting to get away from here. But they don't take stock in ghost stories, do they? Then they're a superstitious lot of men. And when things happen that they can't understand... Like, right? like the murders? Yes. Now, four men have been found dead. In each case, the man was near a line fence, and he'd been shot with his own gun. There were no tracks to show that anyone had come to the fence on the other side. Uh, what you do tonight? I'm going to ride the line fence and see what happens. I wish I could ride with you. Uh, me go? No, Tonto. I'm going to ride alone. I'm going to start right now. Oh, here comes Jack Mason. Me get out of sight. Yes. I'm going to see you, Tonto. Not yet. Oh, 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 oh there. Hi there, Mr. Justice. Hello, Mason. Oh, oh. I was in town this afternoon. I hear the sheriff made an arrest yesterday. Some Indian who was suspected of causing the deaths around well, here. I know that redskin, he escaped last night. Oh, he did? The sheriff says that's as good as proof that he's a killer. But he's mistaken. Mistaken? I'll tell you, mister, there's something beyond human understanding in back of these shootings. There is, huh? You bet there is. Something that makes the men shoot themselves. Well, maybe I can find out what it is. I don't think I'll shoot myself. Well, you ain't going out tonight. Why not? Well, it's dangerous, I can tell you that. Collins will tell you, too. I'll have to take my chances. Is Collins going with you? No. How long will uh, he stay on living here? Oh, I don't know, Mason. We haven't discussed his moving yet. Well, I'll have guards posted along the line fence. I've done it before, but it didn't help none. But if you yell loud enough, there might be somebody nearby to hear you. Well, what about you? Will you be out on guard? I reckon so. Might see you later. Very well. Well, if it was me, I wouldn't do what you're doing, but I reckon you know what's best. We might meet tonight. Yeah. Good luck to you. Get on there. Bob, there's one thing more you've got to remember. The Lone Ranger had a paper in his pocket that gave him title to the ranch. It was in his pocket, eh? Yeah. Didn't Tonto ride with him that night? No. If Tonto had, the whole thing might have been different. The Lone Ranger rode alone. I didn't know until some time later what happened. He was riding along the North Line fence in Silver, just walking slowly and hitting the line with a stick ever so often to be sure it wasn't broken. It was dark, pitch dark, just as it had been on the nights when four men had been killed. Silver, old boy, it is a chance. But every one of those other men was shot with his own gun. That's what we're counting on. Don't think they can make me do that. Just hope I can depend on certain men. Hey there. Oh boy, whoa, steady. Mr. Justice? That you, Mason? Yeah. I found nothing along the fence from the northeast corner. Did you come from the other direction? Yeah. You know, mister, I was thinking. What's that? 
Do you have a will made out in case something should happen to you? Well, I haven't thought much about a will. Well, everyone ought to have a will. Who'd get this piece of land if you were to be shot? I, I suppose my own would be those who are closest to me. Why? Oh, I just wondered if that youngster was any relation to yours. He's probably as close to me as anyone. Oh. Uh, you ain't got any ideas about the uh, ghosts, have you? There are no ghosts, Jeff. You should know that. That's right, there ain't no ghosts. Hand over your guns. What? You heard me pass them over, both of them. I have to know you were, too. What if I don't? I'll help myself. Mason, what's the idea? You still don't, Savvy? Yes, I guess I do. You're the killer. You were able to ride close to every one of the four men and take his guns. The way you did mine. Oh, you're smart. But why? You'll be found out and you'll hang. I'll take that chance. Mason, why are you doing this? Is Logan willing to go this far to get Collins Ranch? Get off your horse. I'll stay where I am. Oh, suit yourself. Maybe this will knock you off. <laughs> Shooting too. Yeah. Get some light around here. Find something to burn. Where's Jeff Mason? Here I am. I got here just a minute ago. I was close by when I heard the shot. Stand back, Jeff, and let me see him. Why? It's Mr. Justice, the new owner. Great day. Well, how is he? Is he hit bad? You know what a bullet does at close range, Jeff? He's the same as the others. This makes five of them. Five men. Doggone it all, and they all got it the same way. Hank, you want to let him pick him up? We'll sort him to the ranch house. Maybe someone better start now and get to town so the sheriff can be here first thing at daybreak. Uh, the sheriff won't find no more than you did before. No tracks, no nothing. Tell me, boys, I ain't staying here a double the pay or ten times the pay. Whatever it is that makes these men shoot themselves will get us all if we stay around. Take the lead rein off the white horse, boys. Now, boys, you take care of the body. I'll start for town right away. Good idea, Jeff. That's the sheriff back with you. Yeah, I will. Get up there. Good thing that had to happen to him. Oh, Pete. Hey, now, man, just you cry it out and you'll feel better. Morning. Oh, Miss Collins. Dan. Dan, you haven't heard. Heard? Lodge, your friend was out riding the line fence last night. Yeah? It happened to him. What did? Same as to the others. The boys brought him in and put him in the back bedroom till the sheriff in the corner could get here. Mr. Collins, you don't mean that the law... That my friend was shot. His own guns found in his own hands, just as the other four men who were shot were found. I, I don't believe it. Oh, Matt, it's true, Matt. They brought him in a little while ago. Jack Mason has gone for the sheriff and the coroner. I want to see him. We've got to leave him as he is till the law is done, Dan. The law be hanged. I'm going to see my friend. Where's the Indian? Oh, no, that's right. These are the horses I've got to... Here's the law. Collins, I guess it's high time we ask you a few questions. Five murders on your ranch is five too many. Why, Sam, you don't think Sam has hey, anything to... Hey, look, the Indian. Hey, you stand where you are. Hey, come in. See what happened. You're the rat thing we had in the jail. That's right. I'll fix you. Kill my boss, huh? Stop, gun. No! Sir, Never hey. mind, Mason. You only slapped down the gun you drew. I'll handle things here. Me not draw a gun. You've got a lot to explain, Redskin. You already had you jailed as a suspect on the first three deaths. The night you broke out, another man was killed. And now the new owner of this ranch. And here you are. Sheriff, I want to speak to you. Lauren, what are you doing here? Sheriff, I want to find out who inherits this ranch now that the new owner is dead. Who inherits it? Madge. Sheriff, Sheriff, no one gets it. It's our property. I reckon you're wrong there, Mrs. Collins. But I'm not wrong. Madge, honey, listen to me. But Sam will lose everything. It wasn't ever meant. I reckon Mr. Lockman is right, Collins. You sold the ranch to Mr. Justice. You told us that yourself. Yes, but I... now that he's dead, it goes to his heirs. That kid is the one nearest to him, Sheriff. I happen to know that because he told me so. We are a better place than you. What's your name? Now, hold on. This is a fine time to talk about that. Well, I guess you're right, Sam. Yeah. You just stop in and see me and we'll make a deal. I'll take the property off your hands at a fair price. Oh, Sam. Sam, say something. Do something. I, I've got to think things out, Madge. I don't know just where we stand. Maybe I can help us straighten it out, Collins. Hmm? Me and the rest of the hands around here were all in on a deal. All in on a deal? Yep. Maybe it was a kind of a funny deal. 
Down from the bottom of the deck, you might say. Do you know anything about these murders? Reckon so, Sheriff. Then what about them? The engine didn't have no part in them. Neither did no ghost. Of course not. It's all right. I told him that everyone was here. Good enough. Now we can talk. You told whom? The gent that sacked the cards. You see, the engine didn't bust out of jail last night. He was let out. He, he was let out. Well, and name the one that did it. I'll jug him. He was let out so he wouldn't come to trial and be proved not guilty of the murders. If he cleared out of these parts, folks could blame the murders on him. Well, maybe he's still the guilty one. Sheriff, because you didn't take any stock in the humbug about ghosts or hoodoo, that threw off the men that were back of the whole scheme. Meaning Lagren there. Rick, what do you mean by that? You wanted to spread, Lagren. When Collins wouldn't sell, you figured to scare away all the cowhands so he couldn't run the ranch. And you could buy it cheap. You doggone near got away with it. Sure, if you can't make charges like that against me. I know about you wanting to buy the ranch, Lagren, but that doesn't mean anything. Of course not. When the Redskin turned out to be a friend of the Lone Ranger, he didn't run away and hide. He brought the Lone Ranger here. Hey, hey what kind of Tommy Rod is this? The Lone Ranger ain't here and he never was. Hold on, Jeff Mason. He came to us and told us his plan while you were in town yesterday. He wanted to get you to show your hand, which you did. Oh, no, that's a lie. We all figured it was a pretty tall story when he first told us he thought you were the killer. And then when he showed that there'd be no harm done if we tried his scheme, we were willing to try. Every one of the boys that was on guard last night had taken the lead out of his cartridges, including Mr. Justice. What? You could have used the guns you took away from any one of us, and it would have been the same. Cartridges had no lead in them. But you... that's why we crowded in close as soon as Mr. Justice went from his horse. We didn't want you to see that he wasn't hurt at all. No, you're just trying to trick me. I didn't have anything to do with it. I... Can you tell that to me, Mason? Huh? Well, Sam, there he is. Alive and well. Sheriff, sure, sure, that British man here. The last time you saw me, Mason, I had no mask. I wore a disguise and called myself Mr. Justice. Oh, you can't prove anything against me. Who can't? Why, you dirty killer. Three of us were less than 20 feet away in the dark last night when you took that masked man's guns and fired at him. Mason, you murderer. Each of us had a good cartridge under the hammer after we heard you start talking. If he'd signaled that you were going to shoot with your own gun, you'd have been drilled like a sieve. Mason, it's a finish for you. Now, why did you do it? You can't involve me. I had no part in it. Mason wanted to buy the ranch. Buckin, you're a dirty liar. You're in this as deep as me. You told me I'd take your orders, or you'd let Collins know I held out on the last cattle deal. Here, he lies. Don't believe him. Take the two of them in. We'll see what a trial and court brings out. Yeah, we oh, God. Madge, we're not a hoodoo ranch anymore. But that paper, the one that sold the ranch. But Sam, it's there on the table. Where, where's the Lone Ranger? He and his friends slipped out when they saw that Mason was fixed for the hangman. I saw him leave the paper there on the table, so as you could tear it up. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed.
please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.